Hello, everybody. Welcome to All Villa, No Filler. Please remember to like and subscribe. I have read the small print. Google owns YouTube. And do you know what the Google head honchos have said? They said in the small print section 100,000B, I think it's about there. I read the whole thing. If you do not subscribe to the All Villa No Filler podcast, you support West Bromwich Albion. You want Birmingham City to get promoted and you think Wolves deserve to be in the Champions League. That is what it says. I can't help it. So if you don't click subscribe, just down there, get that bell notification, all that stuff. Well, then we all know what it means, don't we? I didn't write the rules. I didn't make them, okay? Uh, now, um, I've spent the entire morning listening to Fleetwood Mac, uh, Rumours album, uh, 1975, I think one of the greatest albums of all time, Lindsay Buckingham, Stevie Nicks, Christine McV, Birmingham's own Christine McV, maybe she supported the Villa back in the day, who knows, uh, but look, um, I've been listening to that just sort of clearing my head, thinking about last night, what happened with Aston Villa against Chelsea, thinking ahead to, uh, you know, um, Manchester United. Don't stop thinking about tomorrow. It'll be better than before. Yesterday's gone. Yesterday's gone. And indeed it has gone, but the memories still linger of what happened against Chelsea. There are so many people clicking unsubscribe right now, aren't they? Yeah. But please stick with it. Um, look, uh, look. Uh, I did a, re a post post match reaction to it. I was on the Claret and Blue podcast with Dan Rowlinson. Go check that out. I uh, did it live there. I also did a, a live react, well, a, a post match reaction uh, on the All Villa podcast. Um, what did I think of the game? Well, I I'm not going to belabor the point. I'm going to try and think about Manchester United next and what's happening. Um, you know, don't stop the flip with Max on. That was Bill Clinton's. Um, song wasn't it in, in the 92 us election um fairly sure it was uh, i should do that i can do a good impression of bill clinton maybe i should do the whole podcast in his voice yeah maybe cheer everyone up mate does it would it cheer people up no uh well uh aston villa they're a mighty fine soccer team from uh, birmingham look manchester united are playing villa next will they have learned from uh what newcastle and chelsea did now let's think about what they did. Uh, well, Newcastle and Chelsea both went into a something that was a bit of a mid block. So when Villa had possession, it felt like both teams would retreat into a formation that was kind of forcing Villa to make decisions and making Villa look a bit static. Now, um, also on top of that, the press would be relentless. They would be really on top of our players. But then when Villa had possession, they'd fall into a formation where with Chelsea last night, what would happen is that You'd have Enzo Fernandez and Moises Caicedo would push forward a bit, and then you'd have Conor Gallagher and Cole Palmer both there, close to the defenders. So Fernandez and Caicedo just off Kamara and Luis, who both look like they're in a straight line and a little bit static. And then you would have uh, Carlos Longley and uh, Gallagher and Palmer both on them. And what would happen is Mad Madueke and Nicholas Jackson would spread out right to press onto the fullbacks as the ball went out to them. So what would happen is that it'd be so bunched up in the middle that our centre-backs would get the ball and kind of pass it back and forth to each other and look forward and be like, hmm, it's very congested in the middle. I'm just going to have to push it out wide. But then Chelsea were good at pressing out there. Now, if they managed to get past the ball, past uh, Chelsea's two midfielders, past our own midfielders and bypass them into McGinn or into Tielemans, what happened then was that you would get both the Chelsea defenders would be right on their back. You know, I can think of Malagusto being on the back of John McGinn a lot. Um, Tielemans didn't seem to have he had a pretty poor game he's been good for us since about September yes there was an off day for him um, so what would happen is that basically it felt, kind of felt like Villa were just sort of left at sixes and sevens and couldn't really make their mind up on how to play out and that was in part down to Chelsea's press a, a lot of Villa's players had off days but you have to sometimes wonder is there something the opposition are doing that is forcing Villa's players into feeling a little bit like they can't get their rhythm that the machine isn't working now, something else that's notable is that against Sheffield United, now Sheffield United are a horrendously poor football team, right? I was at the game and I could not believe how bad they were. But that said, Villa still had to do the business and we'd get win the game 5-0. You know, we were excellent. Is it a coincidence that Ezri Konsa was at right back? 
did he just add a bit more defensive solidity, particularly alongside Carlos and Longley? And then when you go to Cash at right back and you have Moreno at left back, and the two of them kind of both want to press on, that forces Kamara then to come back into the right back role to compensate for it. But then Cash pushes forward. And it just felt like him and Bailey didn't really have much of an understanding yesterday. With Tielemans also there, it felt like the three of them just kind of became a bit of a, a mush. I'd love to have somebody who studies tactics and can watch the game back and has stuff like Y Scout and can look at all these um, figures and just figure out exactly what it was that didn't quite work. But was it a coincidence that Conce was at right back in Sheffield United and Villa looked more solid and better? And then Cash was at right back and Cash was at right back again against Newcastle and Chelsea. Is it a coincidence that we? The things sort of malfunctioned a bit. Might not be. Um, but that's not to me saying I think Cash is a bad player. I don't think Cash is a bad player. I'm just saying within the system that Unai Emery was playing and was Cash being there, was it doing something to the shape that was forcing Villa to malfunction a bit and therefore leaving our players looking a little bit static and a little bit unsure of themselves? I don't fully know. I don't fully know. But um, look, Chelsea did that to us yesterday. And then when they got the ball, Moreno had pressed on and they were Madueke would push out, push out to the right, um, and have quite a bit of space to play run into. And even someone like Malagusta would be pushing forward as well. Um, so plenty for Chelsea to play with. Newcastle did something similar. Newcastle kind of went man for man, pressed us very high. Anthony Gordon was constantly finding space in behind cash. Then you had um uh, but if Villa managed to keep the ball beyond that press what Newcastle would do is fall into a set kind of a it was almost like a four five one and that would they'd sort of bunch up and it would again leave us with Ka with Kamara and Louise standing in a straight line uh Tielemans looking like or Tielemans or uh uh Zaniolo I think it was he came on for him sort of uh, in the sort of mid field role here just looking a bit isolated and lost and again, it was kind of malfunctioning. Something wasn't working and then there'd be plenty of space to play into when they won the ball. So obviously teams are better preparing for Aston Villa, aren't they? They just are, which is what was always going to happen given the fact that we've been so brilliant at home. Teams are not going to turn up and just play their normal game. They're going to have to work out a way to play against a team that has won 15 games in a row at home. This is a new challenge for Aston Villa. It's a new challenge for Unai Emery. It's something we're going to have to adapt to. And yes, there may be a, um, an adaptation process where we're not quite hitting our rhythm like we were before as Unai Emery works things out with the personnel he has available. Because let's face it, losing Conser, having Paul Torres out, having Mings out, these things do matter. You know, losing your, be your, your best players, the players that would start, it does, it does matter. Um, you know, um, so, so, so that you know, he, he can only work with what kind of he's got at the moment. But I do back Unai Emery to work it out. Of course, the Professor Unai is what an amazing job he's done at Aston Villa since he turned up. But um, yes, there are going to be some challenges and difficulties, possibly if teams keep causing us problems in the way Newcastle and Chelsea have. Now, I talk about Manchester United, Man United. Now, nothing would. There is nothing I would love more than to see all those United fans turn up at Villa Park. On Sunday, with their Paul Weller haircuts, um, their Noel Gallagher haircuts, sitting around, got moaning, saying, This feels like sitting under a leaky roof at Old Trafford with all the water raining down on me as Aston Villa blast them away, like we did last season. But let's face it, Eric Tenag, he's a smart coach. He'll have watched what Newcastle and Chelsea did and maybe prepare in a similar way to what they did. And if I had to imagine what he might do, if he repeats what Chelsea did, he might have Casemiro and Kobe Mainu push up a little bit, quite close to Kamara and Louise. And then you're going to have Bruno Fernandes and um, the uh, striker Hoyland. The two of them kind of in the Gallagher Cole Palmer role, both close to our centre backs. And then out left, you're going to have Marcus Rashford. And if Cash is playing as push forward, Oh, well, Marcus Rashford might just find a bit of space. And if Alex Moreno's pushed forward, oh, well, Garnacho, who's the big danger man at the moment for me, might find a lot of space to play around in as well. So it feels like we can't really approach the game in the way we did against Chelsea. If Man United are going to do that exact game plan um, and cause us a whole world of pain, maybe they won't pull it, pull it off as well as uh, Chelsea did, but then maybe they will. 
So, um, like I say, I, I can't help but imagine that's what Manchester United will try and do. How do Villa react to that? Do we bring in a centre-back to play at left-back? Um, that is not ideal at all, um, particularly because we haven't really played that way this this, this season. But does Pal Torres go to left-back, long lane to the middle, Carlos on the right and then Cash on the right? I don't like the sound of that particularly, but is that one way we do it? Because it just kind of feels like those two fullbacks, something's not quite working at the moment. Something's not quite working. There's a there's a ghost in the machine somewhere. Um, that said, I still think Aston Villa, we're, we're a super football team. We have a brilliant manager. We have great players. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, there's always going to be a moment of, of blippiness. And it's just how you work through that and work it out. Look at Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. Jurgen Klopp's one of the greatest football managers of all time. And uh, there have been moments while he's been at Liverpool where things have not functioned as well and they've had to come through it and work it out. And that's something Aston Villa are presently having under Unai Emery in the last week or two, barring the amazing result of Sheffield United. Um, but yes, it's going to be interesting to see how we um, adapt to it. Manchester United, do I think we can beat them? Absolutely. You know, they, they concede a lot of goals. Um, there's definitely something to get there at, but there's also, you know, two bad losses we've just had in a row at home. Manchester United will be feeling quite confident, I would say, about coming to cause Villa problems. Uh, and Villa might not quite be as confident as we would have been two weeks ago going into this game. But that said, you know, under Unai Emery, Aston Villa, when they've had setbacks, have tended to bounce back. I didn't end up doing this in the voice of Bill Clinton. Uh, you know, I apologise. That would have just been kind of annoying. And I didn't do it in the voice of Donald Trump either, folks. I tell you. Um, but uh, but yeah, let me know what you thought. Please like and subscribe. Um, keep the faith. It's always going to hit, hit a bit of a blip at some point. Um, but I still back quality as players, quality as managers, quality as coaches to uh, pull us through. Uh, and by the end of this season, let's see where we are. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Up the mighty Villa.